Today, a movie so vile I can't even say its name on YouTube. Just think of a Stanley Kubrick classic and add vibrator torture. Yep. Today's movie was directed by the infamous Isayasu Sato. If the name sounds familiar, it's because I reviewed his earlier film Pleasure Kill on the channel before. But this one has sleaze cranked up to a thousand. We start off the film with a schoolgirl putting up missing posters all around Tokyo. She is harassed by multiple media outlets wanting to know the story behind the posters. Afterwards, she meets this sleazy looking private investigator who offers his help for a very cheap rate. She doesn't seem to be very interested at first glance, but that will change pretty soon. We then meet this group of young ladies on a night out on the town. By that I mean McDonald's. I, I mean I don't blame them, that's where I went last Friday. The girls get catcalled and their answer is like, we'll never fuck you, so why are you even bothering? And then they tell each other what they'll be doing and one of my favorite character just says, well, I'll be masturbating, which Good idea! Then we get some more backstory on our schoolgirls. We see that the girl putting up the poster has a weird relationship with her dad. She gets into her apartment and we hear messages left on her phone by her father. And the first one is pretty normal, you know. Hey, I'm working late today, no worry, just get yourself something to eat. And then the next message is like, I wanna fuck you so bad, girl. And these types of films really make me feel better about my relationship with my father. Then she gets a visit from one of the friends in the group, we'll just call her schoolgirl number two. And schoolgirl number one is kind of pissed and she just drops hot water next to her, I didn't really get their argument but whatever. The movie then shifts tone a bit and shows us what we expect if you've ever read the synopsis in the back of the DVD. We get this beautifully lit scene of a woman being tortured by our maniac killer. But he's not just some weird serial killer, he's a weird Japanese serial killer. So he uses vibrators on his victims before murdering them. That's why it's called vibrator torture. I'm not even fucking kidding. There's a big black fucking vibrator that he loves and he just shoves it in until they die. And well, he poisons them. Poster Girl later meets our private investigator and they talk about finding the man on the posters. He asks her if she has any money and she's like, no, but you know, we can arrange something. Which usually means cock sucking. But the weird private investigator slash photographer is like, I'm having none of that. And he kidnaps our schoolgirl. We finally get to the meat and potatoes of the film. We see our photographer's torture dungeon and it's covered in pictures of his previous victims. And I have to give this movie a lot of props, especially in set design. The set looks creepy, it's just some dark, gritty, fucking sleazy looking room covered in pictures of dead women. It really sets up the characters as this total psychopath, and it's such a well-made film. It's one of the later Nikatsu, so it doesn't really have uh, the classiness of the previous films from then that I've reviewed, but it makes up in pure brutality. <laughs> But our sex maniac didn't expect so much cooperation from schoolgirl number one. In fact, when he pulls up her skirt, she has her own dildo. Yes, vibrators included. The photographer doesn't kill her right away. He asks her why she wants to find this man, to which she answers some bullshit, and the man, I guess because he falls in love with her, decides to go on his investigation anyways. He asks questions to schoolgirl number two, and she tells him that, well, he's dead. So he goes back to schoolgirl number one, very angry because he thought she lied to him, and she tells him that no, schoolgirl number two lied to him. So she plans to kidnap and torture and murder schoolgirl number two, with the help, of course, of the maniac. They make up a plan and accomplish their mission into kidnapping schoolgirl number two. And then we get to the most brutal torture scene of the film, that I can't really describe in detail, cause I can't even say the name of this fucking movie without getting, you know, banned from this fucking website. So I'll, I'll, I'll keep it on a down low. What I'll say is that schoolgirl number one really gets into it and she helps the maniac to kill the girl. And then they kind of fall in love with each other because they're clearly two fucking psychopaths and they're perfectly made for one another. 
she even turns his vibrating fetish around and uses it on him, which he quite enjoys. Because what man doesn't like something up his ass? Am I right, boys? It's just me? Okay. Okay, well, I'll just go fuck myself, I guess, if I'm gonna be the only honest person here. So, what did I think of Loli? Something vibrator torture. Haha, -ha, didn't say it, YouTube. This is a family-friendly channel, YouTube. I really liked it. I mean, it's very different from the previous Nikatsu titles I've covered in the sense that it's from the late 80s, it's not a period piece, and it's not really uh, beautifully shot, even though I am interested in the style. Like I said, it's very similar in style to Eat the Schoolgirl, which is a movie I really enjoyed. This one is, you know, less about the characters, less about, you know, the plot, and more about the sheer brutality and sleaze, and I'm not surprised it's from the same director as Pleasure Kill. Now I know I haven't talked about Splatter Naked Blood, I'll get to it eventually, I just wanted to get through some of his other films before getting to the most known one. It's not some great piece of artistic cinema, but it does bathe in its own filth and it's not afraid to show it. So if you're a fan of Eat the Schoolgirl and some of his other works, I highly recommend this one. But if you are easily offended by women getting tortured with vibrators, yeah, maybe skip this one. Anyways, see you guys later.